Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we're gonna take a look at the Scythe Fuma Revision B CPU cooler. This cooler promises a lot of performance without killing your wallet, and this is the first dual tower cooler I'll be reviewing, so I'm pretty excited to see how it performs. Big thanks to Scythe for sending this over for review. The Fuma is a dual fan dual tower cooler compatible with LJ1151, 2066, and AM4 sockets. Scythe doesn't rate it for a specific TDP, but I'd estimate it to be around 200 watts, and it sells for only around 47 US dollars, so this is a very accessible cooler. The Fuma is equipped with six heat pipes and comes with two 120 millimeter fans rated for 300 to 1400 RPM. They are equipped with sleeve bearings, which is kind of unfortunate, but not too surprising considering the price. Overall, the Fuma is only 149 millimeters tall, which means it'll fit in the vast majority of cases, even relatively small micro ATX towers. And I have to commend Scythe on their design because the Fuma is really easy to install. The first step is to take the four spacers and set them on the mounting holes on the socket. Next, you take the two mounting brackets and set them on the spacers. Secure them with the long screws. Do the same thing on the other side. Next, we're going to spread some thermal grease onto the CPU. With the dab of thermal grease down, the next step is to take off the protection sticker from the base of the heatsink. You never want to forget that. We will set it down on the CPU. We'll wiggle it a little bit to make sure the thermal paste spreads out evenly. Okay, I put the mounting brackets on backwards, so I'm going to try to fix that. Now the next step is to install the crossbar. When tightening stuff like this down, always alternate screws so that you don't clamp one all the way down while the other one's loose. That helps prevent things from bending. There we go. So now the heat sink is installed and next we'll install the fans. The first thing you need to do is install the fan clips. Quick note on this splitter, the white connector doesn't have the RPM pin. Only the black one will report RPM. But since we're using two of the same fans anyway, it really doesn't matter. And then into the CPU fan socket. And it's all installed. RAM clearance depends on the layout. You could install the front fan on the back and there won't be any clearance issues, but with a fan in front like this, you can adjust the height to make room for the RAM heat sinks. My test bench is a Ryzen 3 1200 overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, a passively cooled MSI GT1030, and a Seasonic 850FX Focus Plus power supply, which can run passive under low load. Because the 1030 and Focus Plus can both run passive cooling, the only sound coming from this system is from the CPU cooler itself. Load temperatures are taken with Prime 95 and temperatures are reported as deltas, degrees above ambient temperature. First, we'll look at the idle results. These are the noise levels and temperature deltas with no programs running and the fans at their minimum RPM. The Fuma is effectively inaudible at idle, actually nearly silent until 40% fan speed. If you value extremely low idle noise, the Fuma fits that bill perfectly. Next, we'll take a look at the load results. These are taken with Prime 95 running and the fans at full speed to show the upper limit of cooling. The Fuma is dominant here, the lowest load temperature of any air cooler I've reviewed. It's even only half a degree warmer than the Castle 240, a liquid cooler with a 240 millimeter radiator. That is really, really impressive performance. Here is the RPM versus PWM graph, which shows the granularity of control you can achieve with the fan. The Fuma's fans are fairly typical. In the bottom 20% of the PWM range, the fans run at their minimum RPM, and the fan curve stays fairly linear through 100%. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Next, we'll look at the temperature versus RPM graph. This shows whether the cooler is limited by airflow or by heat transfer. A leveling off at high RPM indicates more airflow isn't helping, and the cooler is limited by the base or the heat pipes. The Fuma does level off quite a bit, but to me, it looks looks like maybe another half degree could have been dropped with higher speed fans. The downside, of course, would be dramatically increased noise for a very slight improvement in performance. Now we'll look at my favorite graph, temperature versus noise. This answers the fundamental question, how loud is it and how well does it cool? The Fuma hits very close to the Dark Rock 4 from Be Quiet, a much more expensive cooler. Very impressive performance indeed. As an interesting side note, here's the noise versus RPM graph. You can see the effect of having a second fan here. Compared to other coolers with only one, a three to five 
five decibel increase at any given RPM. Considering three decibels is a doubling of power, though our perception of volume isn't exactly in line with that, it looks like noise doesn't scale linearly with number of fans. But as we've seen, two fans are generally better than one, so looking at only noise is kind of a moot point. Next up, here's the chart of cooler scores, a combined rating of temperature and noise. You can think of this as a metric to compare coolers running at their optimal speed, balanced between performance and noise. The Fuma nearly takes the top spot, losing out only to the Castle 240 from Deepcool. Compared only against other air coolers though, the Fuma does come out on top. Very often, high performance coolers like this will tank in the price to performance category, but not so here. The Fuma actually does very well and has the best value of any cooler over $30 that I've tested. The Fuma has has exceptional performance, especially considering it's under $50. No other cooler beats it in idle noise and no other air cooler beats it in temperature. I would have liked to see some rubber vibration dampers on the fans to reduce noise a little bit further, but overall this is a fantastic cooler. The performance at lower fan speeds is especially appealing. I think the dual fan setup helps immensely at low RPM because it doubles airflow while only barely increasing noise. For those of you interested in a very quiet computer or one of the best, perhaps the best, air cooler available, Scythe's Fuma is it. Click the link in the description to pick one up for yourself. Hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions on the Fuma or these results, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped. And I'll see you in the next video.